WBC belt held by Bellew at the moment. Latvian Myrus Bredis taking on Simon Valley Lee, who's unbeaten in nine himself. What an opportunity for the Middlesbrough man. Johnny Nelson's going to join Paul and Adam Smith for commentary now after our MC starts. John McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Echo Arena here in Liverpool, England for tonight's World Championship Boxing that's brought to you by Eddie Hearns Matchroom Sport and sponsored by 32red.com, JD Sports, StubHub, Texo Scaffolding and WeBuyAnyHouse.com. We are live on Sky Sports as we continue to bring you the very best ringside seat in the business and all the officials here have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control at ringside so let's get the action underway with eight rounds in the cruiserweight division introducing to you firstly fighting out of the red corner wearing the white trunks trimmed with black and gold weighed in at 14 stone eight pounds eight ounces with an undefeated nine fight record nine wins two inside the scheduled distance Ladies and gentlemen from Middlesbrough, Simon Valadli! And across the ring, undefeated, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed with red, weighed in at 14 stone, 5 pounds and 9 ounces, a 20 fight record, 20 wins, 17 inside the scheduled distance. Ladies and gentlemen from Regal Latvia, please welcome Midas Timekeeper at the bell is Jamie Kirkpatrick, and our referee in charge of the eight round action is Mr. John Latham. Well, do you not know, expect me to go off your bare instructions at all times? When I tell you break, you both break clean. Defend yourselves at all times, and the best luck to you both. Touch gloves, touch them once. A very warm welcome to what should be another crackling night here on the banks of the Mersey. Good looking action through this deep Liverpool card and we kick off with a battle of the unbeaten cruiserweights, the highly touted Latvian Myrus Bredis is in with former ABA champion Simon Vallely. It's a, uh, a good one. Neither has lost. It's a real opportunity for Valerie to step up, and how good is Myrus Bredis, Paul? That's what we need to find out, Adam. He's, he's worked himself into the number one position for the main event tonight. Tony Bellew is WBC title, so he has to impress over here. He's keeping busy and keeping active as a man to challenge him, which is also good to see. And it's a massive step up and a huge opportunity for Valerie. And of course, your old division, Johnny. It is. I, I like Valerie how he, he imposes himself and sets himself up to just stand to try and uh, 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 intimidate Bradis from the off. He's not holding the centre of the ring, but just standing trying to, to size the, the, the timing and, 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 and the movement of Bradis. Early on, straight away, you can see Valerie getting the jab going nice. He's, he's landed with it a few times, but you can also see Bredis ready to set that right hand counter over the jab also he's looking to slip and come over the top of the right hand so good sharp jab from Valerie but also be careful coming back they stopped his last six as Myra's Bredis and won all 20 so far 17 knockouts as Valerie tries to get a right hand in gloves low it could be a case of who lands first with these two it's a good right hand counter from Valerie it's the shot that Bredis has been looking for and Valerie seemed to get first blood with that overhand right there, but when Bredis threw the jab, he landed it nice. When both fighters are throwing the jab, they don't seem to be interested in slipping the shots. They're getting hit by the jab because it's concentrating so much on getting their own shot off. This could be a, a, a floor two or three rounds down the line, and it could break it any one of them up. Combination from Bredis as he comes in. Valerie very confident at the weigh in yesterday, and uh, I saw him briefly in the gym this morning just checking his weight. and. There was an air about him alongside Nick Marsden to say, this is my chance and no one's really wanted to fight me and I'm not going to make a mistake tonight. But Bredis is the number one challenger for the WBC title. So it is a big ask this for Valerie. It's a huge ask, and but he's well schooled. He's been on that GB squad for so long in the amateurs and sparring at the, the top kids in the division and the heavyweights as well. Also, he won't be overawed by this, and, and he certainly 
Yeah, certainly do. A little bit on the back of the head there. Have a little telling off for that. Yep, John Nathan. The referee from Barry just having a word. I think this match is a, a pretty big shout for the uh, for, for Balali's team. Uh, as in Bellis, he has the experience. They're both the same age, but you can see he's the one that's established himself from the off. He's the one that's getting the better shots off from the off. So he's the one that will be comfortable as the rounds roll on. Brett is just loose there, and a good body shot from Valerie. He's had a decent opener here. Good exchanges just before. Two shots landed from both, good, both fighters and a good exchange. He wasn't too convincing in that opener, Paul. No, it was Second a bit close down. I thought Valley landed, Valley landed the better shots and the, the cleaner shots in the exchanges. But Bredis did have a bit of success also in the exchanges. He landed one or two good shots. And it's a confident start from, from Simon Valley, who, who, who isn't, doesn't seem overawed, does he? Valley in the black, white, and gold with the uh, grey boots with those bright orange laces and the many tattoos around his torso from Middlesbrough. He's 31 now. So too is Myrus Bredis. Well, he seems to get have got the measure uh, of Bredis now. He's, now. he's now dropping the right hand to the body, which is a very confident shot to throw for a fighter, and then coming up back with a left hook. So he's got the measure, and he's got the timing of Bredis, and that's where he's starting to shape well for him. John Layden not too happy with the, the, the shots to the back of the head from both fighters. He's finally got away with it a couple of times, and Bredis is retaliating now. Looking for the big right hand, is it a case of who can establish the jab as they get messy and tied up there? I think Johnny had a good point at the start with the bolt sort of neglecting defending the jab because the bolt looking for the right hand, which Valerie's just thrown, similar to what Bredis was trying to throw earlier on. You know, the bolt, the bolt looking for the counter over the jab, and you'd expect Valerie uh, to have uh, the, the more success with the jab because he's the taller, he's yeah. the longer of the two, and well schooled, and, and, and very well schooled. You can see by the counters, Valerie's tying, he's laying back and throwing a left hook at the same time as well. He's, he, he is well schooled, and there's not much fear of, of, of the power of, of Bredis. There's a right hand from Bredis. Big support from Valerie. And there's the jab from Bredis. Every fight's important for Valerie at this stage of his career. This is his 10th professional fight, so I just puzzle down there. So, so how, how the fight's going, he needs to learn to get into the habit of slipping his shots and be smart with it. And that experience as well, the physical wrestling there as well from Bredis. Yeah, but the, the wrestling there was after the good right hand that landed from him as well. He, he, he pushed them over, it wasn't a knockdown, but he ate him in a little right hand bef just before that Bredis. That was a good shot. I wonder if this will just come down to a little bit more seasoning for Bredis. Is Valerie ready? Just quite after nine professional outings since he turned in March 2013. He's obviously got talent and ability, but Bredis has fought at the higher level. Valerie's starting to just look a little ragged. Uh, 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 when he's getting hit with a shot saying he needs to tie himself up and set himself down again and not get involved in this messy kind of exchange because the success of Bredis will come on top. Meteor shots now coming from Bredis, just misses with an uppercut by a whisker and finally out of range and looking disorganized. You can tell Bredis is comfortable now for trying uppercuts like that. He wasn't in range, he's trying to land up the cut. And oh, right hand. Hand. that's a big shot from Bredis and finally took it only just. He needs to bail, he's got it. And he was hurt badly there. The man from Middlesbrough, and he's angry. He's annoyed with himself. He's a big fight, Dan. He's just sorted. Oh, your face is to hit him there to, to try and wind him up. It was a good right hand. It was a good right hand that landed from him, and it definitely hurt Valerie. And, and like the problem this, is, the mistake what he was making was getting ragged him part way through the round, getting involved in a, in a comfortable exchange for Bredis. So therefore, he was making mistakes because he has the experience when it comes to exchanges like that. And Valerie is too long. He's too inexperienced to, to be getting involved. It was a really hurtful-looking shot, and John Nathan was having a good look straight away, but he did 
recover fairly quickly. Yeah, you see that lad, that's a lovely combination. Just tipping the heads up with a left uppercut and then a right hand round, right round the Call side. You don't see that much. You don't see that very often. It was a good, hateful shot, and it, it certainly did hit Valerie and he needs to he needs Second to recuperate down. this round. Round three. Yep, there's a minute and a half. Here's the third round. We're in the cruiserweight division. Exciting action at the end of the second there. There's Myris Bredis. This uh, Latvian, who's hoping to fight for the World Cruiserweight title soon, trying to uh, dispose of our unbeaten Simon Vallely. Very good uh, former ABA champion, English international. Just hasn't really landed for him as a pro so fast. They've taken the plunge, they've taken the big risk. And you can see Vallely's intention from the off. Look at that back foot, it's flat on the ground, so he's hoping to get full power in all the shots. He's not on the ball of his foot, so he can slip the shots, lean back and, and pop back in with uh, his footwork and defence. He wants to have a tear-up. He needs to concentrate on his boxing ability, which has given him the reputation he has. Just finding gaps, though, in the Valerie defence ball. Yeah, he is. What a, that was a good body shot. Lovely body, body shot, he's shot. crumpled and he has to take a count in the three, first minute of four, round three. Five, Simon Valerie. Six. Seven, is it all getting eight. a little too hot for him in there? He was hurt badly at the end of the second. Down from a body shot. Bredis knows now he has the power. What I like about Bredis is came out in the first round and he's warmed into the fight. Valerie looked like he came out in second or third gear, ready to go really up for it. But, but Bredis has slowly warmed into it, slowly started finding a target, slowly picked Valerie off. He took out Danny Williams, a very old Danny Williams in a couple. Manuel Char, good fighter in five. And now good he right tries to take Valley. out Valerie, but a good right hand back. So a better body. one from Bredis. It's the difference in power, which is becoming more and more apparent. Every fighter has a chink in his armour, and Valerie is his red miss, and he's getting involved in fights he should do. He should box, get out of the way, and step off, get his head clean, keep his cool. He's Valerie. trying to land something back, but the accuracy all with Bredis as he marches forward. And there's that confident look about him, Paul. Yeah, there is. You can see Valerie still groggy from the body shot and the couple oh, of head right shots. down to the head of John Lathan again, having another close look. Valerie into the last minute of the third round. He needs something. He needs to just buy a bit of time, doesn't this he? This is where experience makes all the difference. This is where he needs to. He's lost the round. Get on the back foot, use the jab, get your head clear and loosen up a little bit. Don't get close to this man because Bredis is happy. And to good stand solid the jabs from Bredis, Paul. And yes. another body shot. And another one. Valerie's a bit too brave for his own good. Oh, there's a, good there's body, a body shot. shot again that really looked like a right hand. And John Lathan is on the verge and he steps in. And that's a good stoppage. Myrus Bredis makes it 21 out of 21. And Simon Valerie's unbeaten record is broken. He was brave. He tried to fight fire with fire. It was all just a little too much. It was, it was brave, and I tell you what, someone like Bredis coming over here, if that's Tony Bellew's mandatory challenge, there's not going to be many fans that wouldn't want to see someone like that trying to fight him. I know Tony Bellew is the world champion, Simon Valerie is certainly not, but that's someone that you want to see it, it get an exciting cruiserweight like that who's coming forward. And, very brave from Simon Valerie Day. You could see he was a bit too brave for his own good. Yeah, he said the round's gone, Valerie. forget about the round, but he just wanted to fight, he wanted to try and still catch Bredis as he's coming in. Congratulations to Myrus Bredis for the knockout when it was a risk, wasn't it? It was brave from the team, from Valerie's team. That's what I was going to say, brave from Valerie, brave, brave, brave from his team. Uh, matchmaking is everything. This was just a, a step too far for him because his experience was his downfall, his red miss was his downfall. Then eventually, Bredis was happy to stand there in front of him because he knew he had the power, he knew he could hit him, hit him to the head and the body. Bredis a serious threat on the world stage? He's a threat on the world stage. He, he, we, we haven't, although that was, that, that was, you know, the performance, a short performance. We still haven't seen enough to say if he's going to be a big challenge, but he certainly warmed into that fight nicely, and he, he, he made he made very good work of, of Simon Valley. The body shot was lovely, the first one. Really nice, classy body shot, going up to the head first, and then down the left hook. And you can see the finish, you know, the old Eastern European slyness of pulling the right, the hand down with the left, and then belting round the with the right. The yeah. three, that's it, and drag him in. And remember, really? Bredis will look good doing this against a, 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 a nine fight novice. Will he look good? Do this against a world-rated fighter, yep. uh, and that's the difference. 
you can see him here now, watch it. He'll pull the left hand down with his own and then bang it in. And that's when the referee had finally seen enough. The shot landed. You think you're blocking it well, but the cagey old uh, slyness of, of Bred is pulling the hand down then to hit the tag. That's a, that's a really good body shot. Really good body shot. Touching up to the head first and then bringing it right round. Yeah, nice uppercut as well. Good variety. He took his time getting going, but when he did, Myris Bredis was spot on, as was the referee stoppage, as was the heart and spirit showed by Simon Vallely. Good little fight. It was a good fight. Good, good little warm-up to the night, which hopefully we'll have many more like that. Still unbeaten. And still a potent threat to the world cruiserweight division. His name, Myris Bredis. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Jamie Kirkpatrick has recorded a time of 2 minutes and 36 seconds of the third round. Referee John Latham has stopped this contest with Vala Lee in the known position to continue. Therefore, your winner, and still undefeated from Latvia, Myris Bridges! Bless your appreciation, please for Middlesbrough's Simon Valerie.